I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one in this constant dilemma of finding it difficult to stay creative in these funny times, when all we have right now is ourselves, having been confined within these four walls for what feels like a never-ending year. The limited social interaction has got us feeling uneasy, and it's no wonder that we seem to struggle in finding inspiration to keep creating, especially when what we need is outside stimuli to get our creative self going, to start writing painting, making things with our hands, making music. Yes, we have the internet at our disposal, we can always go online to find inspiration, but nothing beats organic, real life inspiration, especially the ones that hit you unknowingly. Of witnessing a loving elderly couple holding hands crossing the street to remind us that love exists and that love is real. The kind you witness with your own eyes, those are the ones that stay with you. They overwhelm you with all these feelings inside and when the cup that is your feeling is so full, you can't help but to share with others in the form of art. And it hurts when you have all these emotions that you need to let out, yet at times you are just stuck. You just don't know where to begin, you're just not inspired. And here I am, as a writer, sometimes feeling uninspired. I find it hard to find the words that match my truest feelings. But I know that I need to let all this creative energy out. You know, like a jar of peanut butter that you just want to twist open, but the seal is so tight and you're just so hungry and so eager to make yourself a peanut butter sandwich for breakfast, but the jar still wouldn't open. And you just get even more frustrated. So the peanut butter in the jar here is the creative energy within you that needs to be free. And because you feel so stifled, you resort to other ways and means to express yourself. You maybe learn to bake, you learn to cook, uh, cook to cook a new dish, you deep clean the house, you just do anything you can with the unspent energy that you have. Having said that, with every cupboard you clear out, every piece of unused clothing item that you marry condo, every failed baking conquest, one could not possibly be at peace with oneself until what needs to be said is said. That peanut butter jar needs to open because words are meant to be spoken. Indeed, it is important to find the right words to get your message across and sometimes in the height of excitement or rage, we speak without thinking and that is when we should take a step back, reflect and realize that words have immense power. Have you ever read a book, an article, perhaps a motivational quote, those you see daily on Instagram or TikTok and make you feel good about the world? That that piece of information that you just received has restored your faith in humanity. Now, imagine reading words of hate, ridicule, contempt. Those we see every single day, the ones forwarded to you, the ones you're exposed to on social media. How does that make you feel? It ruins your day or instill anger or worst fear in you? And this habit of fear mongering is not healthy for anyone. And this this is why knowledge is power. With knowledge, you are better able to tell right from wrong. In this day and age of extreme accessibility to unfiltered news, it's important to distinguish credibility. It's important to tune out unnecessary noise. People like to complain on social platforms, but real problems can't be fixed with just complaints. Relevant actions need to be Taken. You can't complain a problem away. You need to get off your seat and do something about it. And sometimes these things you read online, they affect you. When words are not being said with thoughtfulness, they can hurt you. We don't put into account how, impo how impactful our words can be. We say things without thinking of consequences. We say things just because they say sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. On one hand, yes, words are only words. You shouldn't let words hurt you. On the other, you're a complex being made of all sorts of feelings and emotions and it's okay to feel all kinds of things when you hear or read something unfavorable because for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. 
it is that law of motion. Yes, that's as far as I know when it comes to physics, so let's not even go there. But the point is, words can heal, but they can also hurt. Give absolutely no hit space for negativities, especially those you find on social platforms. Many of us have been called names before. Many of us have been told we are not good enough, that we should just give up, live in reality, realize that our dreams, our dreams are impossible, that our dreams are too big. How dare they put a limit to our potential? How dare they make us doubt ourselves? How dare they make us feel inferior? But the thing is, when you hear all these unfounded claims often enough, you start to believe them and begin to think, he's right, I am not good enough. He's right, I should give up. He's right, I don't deserve this. These little claims are like little pebbles you collect in your journey of life. And when there are enough pebbles in your pocket, you're weighed down and you can't move. So you stop in your step. And that is exactly what they want for you to stop. And here's a little poem I've written just about that. It's called Monsters. I do not have the mental capacity to cope with unwarranted monstrosity. Monsters, they come in many shapes and sizes. They come as bullies. They mask as words. They exist retrospectively in the form of regret. Monsters lie awake at night, weaving words together, creating a chorus of hurtful banter. They try to hurt you with their sword made of insult and ridicule. They condescend you, making you feel unimportant and minuscule. They want to see you draw blood of distress. They feed off your agony. They want you to feel less. They want to see the world burn, causing destruction to stay relevant. They don't want you to be happy because they are incapable. Words used wrongly can be very dangerous. Words can be monsters. We must understand that words have consequences. Okay, now, how many of you have been touched by a simple how are you? How that little good morning text or those texts you get from your friends from your friends after a night out asking are you home safe they make you feel good they make you feel cared for and loved and it feels good to feel good words used with kindness can warm the cockles of your heart and positive words are undoubtedly uplifting when good things are said to you about you you feel the warmth and affection and these have lifelong impact Simple things like a praise for a job well done or an acknowledgement for an effort. Good job! That's amazing! Beautiful work! These words are encouragement. These words of encouragement are crucial for the development of healthy self esteem. Listening to positive affirmation, they make us feel empowered, confident. Positive words have powerful effects, and what we can do is try to be more aware of how we communicate and what we say on a daily basis to everyone around us because words we say have the ability to leave a positive influence. Nonetheless, as much as words are meant to be spoken, it is equally important to know when to stay silent, practice self-control and hold back on the insults. If you do not have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Sometimes when we are unhappy, we would be more inclined to say things we do not mean. We tend to sound malicious, ca malicious causing harm without actually really wanting to. The best answer to anger is silence, said Marcus Aurelius. Is it really necessary to say mean things when you know that it will hurt the, the receiving party? Once an ugly situation has run its course, wouldn't you be burdened with regret of having said things you don't necessarily mean? It's about addressing the issue at hand using rightful words and not about saying mean things. How many of you have been overwhelmed by the dreadful guilt of having sent that one nasty text to someone you hold so dear? How many of you in that situation have wished to turn back time and wished you didn't hit send? I should have had my fair share of such grievances. I'm not particularly proud of them, but I like to think that these days I've become more aware of things I write and things I say, especially now that there's no room for mistakes. One wrong move, then bam, you are all over the internet and the internet world can be quite unforgiving, which doesn't bode well with the human nature of making mistakes. The moment we realize that no one is perfect, 
we could perhaps be kinder to one another, choosing kinder words to utter and begin using words for the greater good. We use words to express love, appreciation, encouragement, thankfulness, gratefulness, admiration. William Arthur Watts said that feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. So please, if you can, say nice things to the people you love today. Don't wait any longer. For me, for me personally, as someone who expresses through words, I find writing therapeutic and cathartic. I get a sense of relief after having written and I like to think that writing has helped me manage and learn from my experiences, good and bad. I would feel like my burden is lifted and I do somewhat feel brand new after having put my feelings out on paper. And now that my thoughts are organized, I am ready for another day, another challenge of what life has in store for me. I need to be careful when I share my writing and especially when I speak my words on stage especially because I need to assure that what is said is put into context to avoid miscommunication. We don't like miscommunications. Expectations need to be managed and words used must sit right. Everyone loves a good story and everyone appreciates your unique voice but do you sometimes find yourself saying things just to hear yourself talk? Do you just say things to appear relevant without truly understanding what's going on? Do you fact check before sharing stories? Yes, yes, we want to be heard, but we mustn't confuse being heard with being loud. Screaming your words will not make the other party listen to you better. Typing in caps won't make them read. Spewing vulgarities will just get you negative attention. We need to constantly be aware of the words we utter. Never take our role in society for granted. You may think you are just saying what needs to be said, and while there is truth in that, bring your heart with you and take into account the reaction resulting from what's been said. We need to restructure the social fabric by impacting what passes off as a conversation, by creating meaningful connections to bring people closer together. We need to understand the significance of words. We are what we read. We are our habits. We are our thoughts. We are our promises. We are our words. Choose them wisely. But sometimes, just sometimes, like what Emily Dickinson once said, saying nothing sometimes is the most. I'm Arisha and um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk.